Isigaw. 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 More than anything, anyone dito mga Vivian, Jimmy, kaming nasa bundok ng Marawi City. Umuupaw. Umaapaw ba yun? Umaapaw. Umuupaw. Umaapaw. 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 Ang init ng gamdamin, Benj. We want change to happen. We want it now. We want it now. We want the ordinary. We want the human. We want the majority. We want yung mga nasa bundok. We want those the settlers. We want the katutubo. We want the farthest, the farthest from a party to hulo. Makinig tayo, FB. Makinig tayo, OFW. Nandito na si Isko. Nandito na si Isko. Kung kasi ay siya ay kumain ng pagpag, guys. You do not know the feeling of not eating for one week. Hindi kumain at hindi makatulog ng tama dahil sa nangyaring martial law. And that is my message to the young people. Hindi nyo alam paano nahiwa ang ilang parte ng makatawan ng aking mga kababayan, kadugo, kamag-anak. You will never know the feeling of pain. The feeling of pain of body parts Kumakain tayo, sorry. But this is something I have to say. Because I can't sing it out. There's no lyrics. There's no content. There's no social media content that it can approximate that pain of a woman bearing birth in a malong and having no husband at all because he was massacred in a mosque. There is no explanation. There is no sorry. There is no document. There is no hi and hello man lang that it happened to us. This happened to some Filipinos. And there are nightmares. There are nightmares. They are not in oblivion. They are not in forgotten. They are not swept under rugs nor songs. No song can cure a pain of a forgotten people. And I wish I could sing about them. But I can't. And so I can only say that if we want the pain of conviction, the pain of transformation, the pain of transitional justice, the pain of overcoming, then it has to be an isko. Then it has to be a young man who recognizes history. It is a young person who has no barriers and who knows the pain of of sleeping on non, on places not, not sleep, worth sleeping on. Streets, calles, without bu bubong. That is my story tonight. That is my story to the Filipino. And that is my story to you, OFWs. Naka aircon tayo, dolyares tayo, real tayo, branded tayo. But that is not a luxury that we in the farthest, in the mountains, in the seas, in sea houses of Tawi Tawi, can experience. There's no electricity, there's no water, there's nothing that can bring us to an elevator. We will never see an elevator in our lifetime. And when we open beyond dominion, I can dream again. I can dream again. I can dream again. This is me, sabi ng kanta. This is us, a Filipino. We can step together to an elevator of kindness, compassion, of poverty overcoming. Kaya pala natin makakain sa hapag ng kainan magkakasama. Kaming nakamalong. Kaming hindi marunong magtagalog. Kaming hindi marunong magbisaya. Kami hindi marunong may dokumento, walang birth certificate, walang death, walang death certificate dahil hindi kina, kinilala ang paglibing sa amin. Kaya pa rin namin pala makasama. To all the volunteers na so-called iniwan, this, song, this moment is for you. Hindi kayo iniwan. Hindi kayo iniwan. Because there will be time of reckoning. Walang iwanan! Walang iwanan! Walang iwanan! 
Walang iwanan. This, take it from me. Nasanay na maiwan. Kaming mga sama, nasa bangka ng Sulu. Kaming nasa bangka ng Zamuanga. Sanay kaming maiwan. Pero isko, hindi ka mangiiwan. OFW voting right now. Let's fight. Walang iwanan. Fight! Sa hirap dutok tutok. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to be given the, uh, the this space on the stage to talk to you, to, to each and every one. You know, it's a, it's a glorious day of celebration because it's Easter. And I think this is a very timely occasion for us to really celebrate. More especially that in a little while, we will be joined by no less than Mayor Isco Moreno. Now, first of all, uh, you know, I was a member of the uh, cabinet of President Rodrigo Rojo Duterte in my capacity as the Secretary of the Department of Agrarian Reform. Only last October I had to step down as the Secretary. You know, it pays me to step down as a Secretary because you know, you have a lot of privileges when you are a Secretary, you are the alter ego of the President. But I did that out of my love for our people. You know, at the height of the pandemic, I went around the country and I had to suffer being swabbed in my nose for so many times, up to time. Probably if I can remember it, 80 times for that matter. <laughs> so you can just see the effect of the swabbing right now. <laughs> but I have to endure it because I love our people, our farmers. And you know, I have found out in my going around the country that our people, most especially the farmers, are actually very important. The average age of the farmer right now is 57 years old. And a lot of our citizens, particularly the farmers, would like their children to finish college and thereafter they have to leave farming. What will happen to our country if that would be the case? Can you imagine we are an agricultural country? 60 to 70 percent of our population are actually engaged in agriculture. What will happen to us if there would be no one left to plant our farms, definitely we would suffer. We are an agricultural country, remember. Three decades ago or more, our neighboring countries would come here in the Philippines to learn the ropes of planting palay. But ironically, we are now buying rice from other countries. Not only rice, even the bangus, probably the top of bangus that you are eating right now, that's no longer bought in Tagupan in Pangasinan, it's bought in Taiwan. The food of the Filipino masses, the galunggong, it's bought in China, not anymore in the Philippines. So you can just imagine the poor state of our agriculture. Remember right now, we are encountering a lot of difficulties at this juncture of our history. First, we have the pandemic. You know there has been a resurgence of pandemic, most especially in China right now. That's number one. Number two, we have the war in Russia and Ukraine. And can you imagine the indirect effect to us if this war continues? Number three, we have our external debts. We owe other countries trillions and trillions of pesos. And of course, there are a lot of natural calamities that are coming to our country. And all of this, we have to become stable. Food sufficiency is the key. And that is the reason why we have to take care of our agriculture. And that's the reason why I ventured on campaigning as a senator for ISCO. You know, I am not originally, I am not a member of the Action Democratico. I am a member of the PDP Laban. It is the political party of President Rodrigo Roma Duterte. But you know what happened to our party? We don't have any standard bearer. No presidential candidate for that matter. And so I have to choose a presidential candidate that would be the epitome of a true leader. So I tried to compare all the leaders. And you know, the person who stand out and in my honest belief would be the right person to address the crisis, the problems of our country is no less than mayor. Isco Moreno Tomagoso. Whether 
we like it or not, we have a lot of people who are poor. And the one who could really address the concerns of the poor is a person who has actually experienced for himself how it is to be a poor person. Is it not? A person who would care for the welfare of the poor people. Look at the competitors of our Mayo School. They were born with a golden spoon in their mouth. So how would they be able to feel how a poor person feels? You know, if we love our country, this is the right time for us to be truly nationalistic. And the only way to do that is to put a leader in Malacanang who has the love and concern for our people. And that is no less than Mayor Isco Moreno. And I would like to play a part in the solution of the problem of our country. And I'm presenting myself to you. I hope that you and your friends, your relatives, and some of your acquaintances would be able to help me. Because, you know, I'm not a politician. My surname alone is too long that nobody remembers it. Castriciones. I'm not even probably known to many amongst you here. But, you know, <coughs> uh, modesty aside, I'm a lawyer by profession. I've been practicing law for the past 30 years. I have two sons who are both lawyers also. Uh, and I am an author of law books. I am a law professor for the longest time. And I was formerly a director in the Department of Transportation and Communication. I was also an undersecretary of the Department of Interior and Local Government. And only recently, I was the secretary of the Department of Agrarian Reform. My expertise is international law. I wrote books about international law. And I studied in the University of Notre Dame in the London Law Center, United Kingdom. And I think I would have the capability to help Mayor Scott fight for his political platform. And I hope that he would help me. I don't want to spoil your night tonight because this is a day, this is a night for celebration for all of you. And of course, for, for enjoyment and to celebrate the, uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I hope that with the resurrection of the Lord, we will also have to bear in mind our poor people. They depend on us. People who have learned, who have actually, uh, what you call, advantage when it comes to the, 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 the occupying the higher excellence of our society. So I, I think I have said my piece. I hope that we are one in our quest to really install a president who has the heart for the poor, Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso. Thank you so much and good night everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kasushi. Sa inyo lahat. Good evening, good evening. Ako si John Petsison, napapanood niyo sa programa kapag nasa katwiran, paglaban mo, alam niyo, for 40 years, namung problema ang ating bansa dahil dalawang pamilya ang nag-aaway. Patuloy na nag-aaway. Pagka nasa stage, sinasabi nga, tinuturo yung kabila, magnanakaw, magnanakaw. Tapos tuturo yung kabila, sinungaling, sinungaling. Eh sa totoo lang, ang sinungaling ay eh, kapatid ng magnanakaw. Kaya sila ay magsama-sama na. At tayo, nakatuon sa tao. Tama-tama, nag-jacket ako eh. Kasi galing akong subik, may nakita akong shirt. Papakita ko sa inyo yung shirt. Pinangit mo kanina. Subik? Sakto ha? Sakto! Kung tayo ay naniniwala sa progreso ng ating bansa, nagtuturoan ang dalawang kubunan. Let them rewrite each other's history. Napakatagal ng panahon tayo, tao ang nagturusa. So kung gusto nyo ng peace of mind, available si Isko. Panahon na ng eleksyon at kapag ka-eleksyon lumalapit, noong Oktubre ko pa sinasabi ito, umiingay. Dumadami ang fake news, dumadami ang salitaan. Kaya kung tayo ay malilito, tingnan natin ang ginawa. Tingnan natin ang ginawa. At kung itong minimorya ko na gusto ito, pitong 
condominium housing projects, condominium 1, condominium 2, Binon Dominion, Base Community, San Lazaro Residences, San Sebastian Residences, Pedro Hill Residences, may higit sampung libong pinakamahihirap na mamamayan ng lungsod ng Maynila na bigyan ng pabahay. Pinaganda ang ospital ng Maynila, binuhay ang Manila Zoo, dalawang 10 stories, air fully air condition na paaralan ang tinatag. Noong panahon ng pandemya, nagpakain sa 700,000 families ng Maynila. Nag-target ng 100% na papakunahan. Ang napakunahan, 150%. Dahil kahit hindi taga Maynila, kapag nangailangan ng serbisyo, paglilingkuran ni Scott Moreno Dumagoso. <laughs> Pinakamalaking dialysis center, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa buong Asia. Nagbigay ng libreng gamot, malnapiravir, to si Lisumab, Paxlovid, na memorya ko na rin, dahil lang may malasakit sa mamamayan. Kung kayo ay nalilito pa, tingnan ninyo ang ginawa. Ikalat natin sa buong Pilipinas kung ano ang ginawa. Ang sinisigaw ng ginawa, ang taong ito ay mapagkakatiwalaan. Ang sinisigaw ng ginawa, may kakayahan. Ang iniisip, Tao muna, mamamayan muna, serbisyo muna. Ang taong ito ay mapagkakatiwalaan. Kaya kung tinignan mo ang ginawa, sigurado may nanalo na isko Moreno Dumagoso. Ako po si Jopet Sison, ang galing sa barangay, naging konsehal ng anim na taon, nakapagpa-aproba ng 270 ordinances and resolutions. Tawag sa akin doon, ama ng Toda, May, may akda rin ang pamantasang politekniko ng Lungsod ng Quezon naging assistant general manager ng National Housing Authority ng 4 years, nakapagbigay ng housing solutions sa 135,000 families nationwide, naging presidente ng National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation, nakapag-issue ng bahay pants at nakapag-create ng Social Housing Finance Corporation. Ipinaglalaban ko pabahay, pagpapalawin ng kalaman legal at pagpapalakas ng barangay. Sana po, huwag po ninyong kalilimutan, 5-6 ang number ko sa balota. Pagka kayo walang pera, ako ang may malasakit na 5-6. Paglaban po ninyo, Jopet Sison, para sa Maraming maraming salamat sa ito. Paglaban po natin si Isko Moreno. Ngayon lang dadating ang panahon kung kailan merong tunay na leader na may malasakit sa bansa, ipaglaban po natin Isko Moreno para mamuli. Salamat po. But you know, it's supposed to be a celebration. But uh, before that, uh, alam nyo, uh, gusto ko lang muna sa lutin, ano, yung si Jimmy Bondo kanina, nung sinabi niyang medyo nahuli siya yung pagpasok niya kay Isko. But uh, may kasabihan po tayo, huli man at magaling na ihahabol din. At uh, not only that, no? huli man siyang dumating, pero isa kong magaling na tao dumating. Kasi, di ba tama yun? Yeah, 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 yeah. Prepare for that, Jimmy! And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, he was really a big boost. Parang talaga kumbaga sa COVID-19 vaccine, eh, booster siya dito sa ating uh, sa ating <laughs> camp dito sa ating isko. Uh, alam nyo, uh, ikukwento ko lang ng content because uh, nagpo-post na ako dito sa Facebook. Medyo uh, active tayo no, sa Facebook. But uh, pag nag-post uh, po ako ng, about isko, ang hinihintay ko po talagang mag-like eh si Jimmy Mondo. <laughs> Totoo yan. Kasi, uh, you know, he's one of those that I really respect when it comes to, um, you know, the way he thinks. Uh, Napakahusay na tao. Nakasama ko siya nung sa campaign kay uh, Duterte. At uh, hindi ko talaga matatawaran ang kanyang panilindigan. So, napaka-importante na makasama ko siya dito sa Isko Camp. Kaya nung, uh, pagka, nung nag-like siya talaga, Eh, talaga napadasal talaga ako and I was, you know, really thanking God. Sabi ko na at least, you know, one of those 
um, kumbaga sa isang ship, di ba? <laughs> na, na nakuha natin. So, um, I know, I cannot, uh, gusto ko nga sana pag-usapan yung mga issues, no? Uh, at uh, definitely, you know, what happened this morning, napaka-importante po kasi yun, it's really a manifestation of what an evil intention uh, na nangyayari. And I was happy that it, it happened, you know? And, um, syempre, they're playing the gender issue, and of course, they're uh, playing the pa-victim effect, no? You know, I'm a woman, and, you know, cut the bullshit. Because, uh, really cut the bullshit. Kasi, hindi po totoo yan. At, uh, wala pong katotohanan na magiging victim ka kung ikaw ang nakakasira sa mga tao. You know, so, cut it out. At, uh, Siyempre, hindi naman natin masasabing uh, ganun-ganun na lang, no? But uh, uh, this is uh, a campaign. And um, sabi nga natin, uh, you know, this coming May 9 election, and we keep on saying, napaka-importante, napaka-critical, pero yan ang katotohanan. We cannot afford another six years of nothingness. We cannot. You know, uh, palating natin sinasabi na, you know, God willing, mm. if somebody will win, and uh, sabi nga nila, the goodness always win, but that's not the truth. They talk tayo. Kung mananalo, yung may mga evil intention. Siguro God is, you know, telling us that we have to learn something. That the Filipino has to learn something. Pero kung ang mananalo ay yung dapat, karapat dapat, then that means we are in God's mercy. So, tama po yung sinasabi ni Mary is God, ni Orme, na may awa ang Diyos. Bakit si Isko? Because I think he is the most prepared, the most capable candidate of all of them. Real talk to. Isa-isahin po natin yung sinasabi natin resibo, tutuog po yung resibo yun. Pagpakitaan po tayo ng resibo. Sabi nga nila, sino po yung sabi yung attorney ang resibo? <laughs> Doon sa Senate hearing. Anyway, yun lang po, I don't want to dampen the spirit. Alam ko, medyo go, go, go tayo. We do have to celebrate. I want to celebrate everyone, each one of you. Because lahat na nandito at lahat na nakikinig at lahat ng sumusuporta kay Mayor Isko, kay Yormi Isko, that means we are the critical thinking people. Kasi tayo ang nag-iisip. So isigaw natin, sino? Isko! Okay, maraming pong salamat. Thank you and thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for all of this. Thank you.